despite what their moms told them. They just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This, this, this. is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Wednesday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. For There we go. For the Believe Entertainment Network. At Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. Join the Militia live on X-Spaces for the fan feedback segment of every post-game show. We're here to talk about a little Vodtech at Syracuse this Saturday at noon. Syracuse, couple exhibition games, one in the books, one uh, ready to cook. We had uh, Clarion, right? Gotten a double yep. dig- or triple digits there. And I watched none of that game. I was actually busy that day. However, that was a Saturday. Uh, however,. They play tonight, but by the time you hear this, you'll likely already know that. Or you'll have forgotten. And you'll be kicking yourself in the ass right now. But maybe you won't because they're playing Slippery Slope. So, slippery Rock. Slippery Rock. Uh, which I had to look twice because I thought it was a joke. I didn't know <laughs> why. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I get it. I don't. Actually, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, but play Slippery slippery Rock tonight at 7. So, should be a thriller, nonetheless. (laughs) So, they will actually play a real game Monday, though. They will. So, that will be on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, There's a couple games listed here on ESPN+, Plus, and I think that's going to be it for the season, folks. So, Colgate and LeMoyne. And... um, Unless these ACC ones are ACC Network Extra, which they could be, which I think they are, actually. So Youngstown State and Cornell and LeMoyne are three of them. Those are going to be on the paid app. So anyways, that's what that's what I see. Everything else after Cornell, is the that's the tournament, and then we play Notre Dame. Boom. Yeah, I mean, I, from what I see, I don't know. There's a Cornell and a Bucknell down the road that may still be in there, but we'll see. Yeah, Bucknell's not listed, but although, you know, you don't usually get them that late in the season. You know, it's after Christmas. Yeah. So, anyways. I say that because I'm actually trying to convince myself that it's going to be okay because I don't have it anymore. Cancel it. But my son tells me we still have it. So maybe I, <laughs> I have no idea. I'll have to check. It's I want to check on that. Promptly at 7 o'clock. We will check. I will check. I hope everybody <laughs> is doing well this week. And uh, I hope we're over the whole fiasco of the pit game. And some good news. Uh, Coach said Arande's good. Arande's good. Willis, on the other hand, maybe not. But... The uh, running back room is not too shabby, and uh, I think it's best that if he's got a question mark next to his name, he should probably just heal up anyway. Mm-hmm. So, uh, not not a terrible report from Coach, if you listen to the presser. And, uh, I mean, that's pretty much all I got, really, to start this thing off, Joe, unless you have anything. No, nah, nothing too crazy. I mean, just kind of with piggybacking on what you were saying of just – getting over last week and, and hoping that that was just kind of a one-off. We don't see something like that again. You know, McCord came out and said that it was the worst game that he's ever played. Worst he's ever gotten beat. Uh, you know, you spoke that he kept the record going for, you know, 300 the most plus. 300 yards. Yep. Passes per game. Um, and he also broke another record for the most <laughs> interceptions Picks. in the game. Oh, and, oh okay. I was going to say pick sixes. Well, that too, obviously. <laughs> so again, we got to get out the rearview mirror, just like you know, the players and coaches, and just move on to the next one. So, okay, it's just tough. It's tough. 
uh, trends, man. Trends. Yeah, I mean, it's tough, but it's we're all adults, right? It's, again, it's the PTSD for me. Oh, I mean, I hear you. It's that time of year, after a bye, <laughs> we're looking, you know what I'm saying? It's the that season. Thing. Trends of after a bye, you have the trends of what we've done. Yeah, in, absolutely. In November, right? So It's the season mm. of losing, per history. Losing and injuries, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the injury report's not terrible. No. So, you know, I guess we will, we just got to look at the silver lining in things. I felt like we did a good job of that. If probably 10 people listened, they'd realize that. I feel like we did an okay job trying to, uh, I don't know. There were some decent things. I don't remember what they are anymore. But we mentioned yeah, them. dude, it was just a super embarrassing for yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. Look, no. I mean, we had, so there was a whole week, right? And, you know, I spoke to you about, you know, ESPN coming out with some rankings and, you know, the, the early Heisman, you know, top 11 Heisman. And I'm just looking at the stats and how he's like so close and comparable to Cam Ward. And then all of a sudden, you know, minus the running ability. Um, and, you know, I even had a buddy at work where I was like, man, Kyle McCord, he just gets no respect. Like he didn't get respect coming to Syracuse when he transferred to Ohio State. I mean, if you if you remember, I believe that he was he was voted what, like the 10th or 11th best quarterback in the conference going into the year preseason um so it was just i was just telling my buddy like you know, he gets no respect this this and that and then he comes out on thursday and does that and you know and i gotta go into work and my buddy's like i don't want to hear you talk nothing about kyle gord getting <laughs> you know i'm like all right all right like fair i'm just glad fair. my guys at work and didn't even bring it up they acted like it never happened and i was thankful for that yeah so anyways Let's look ahead to Virginia Tech, shall we? We shall. All right. The all-time series between the Orange and the Hokies sits at 11-9 and nine in favor of Syracuse. Both teams pretty solid at home. And I think Syracuse has eight wins at home, and Virginia Tech has seven wins at home out of those uh, 20 games. So, the last meeting last year, 38-10 loss for Syracuse and Blacksburg. This, this year's showdown set for... Uh, November 2nd at noon, like I mentioned earlier, Brent Pry in his third year as head coach, former uh, defensive coordinator for the Nittany, Nittany, yeah, Nittany Lions. Uh, his Hokies finished 7-6, and six, a record good enough to take Tech to the military bowl presented by GoBowling.com Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> where they would beat Tulane 20, or 41-20. to 20. So uh, a, a few, a couple, I just picked a couple here. Um, guys, I thought... To highlight, obviously, Kyron Drones, right? So, proven dual threat, consistently makes plays with his arms, or with his arm and his legs. Um, you know, pretty accurate, obviously mobile, uh, challenge for Syracuse. It's, you know, just statistically this year hasn't been terrible, but uh, going to be a challenge nonetheless uh, to keep him at bay and uh, a pretty solid guy. So, Bashal Tutin. Now, he was injured last game, but I think he's – I've heard he's probable from Coach Pry. If you listen to Coach Pry's presser. Pry. Huh? Pry. Like French fry. No. Pry. No. Okay. P-R-Y. Okay. Am I wrong? I don't know. You're. I'm wrong. Okay. All right. You, you just made – you just made me stop everything I was doing and second guess everything I have written down. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so. That's me. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I, owe, I owe 20 push ups. My bad. <laughs> All right. So, a- as it were, in his press conference, he mentioned that Tootin, I mean, Tootin, dude, he's the engine of this offense. He's ex- he's explosive. Um, he's got the ability to look ahead, find holes. Uh, he's the, he's their bell cow. He's racked up 950 yards on the ground so far this year, 12 touchdowns, uh, an obvious player to watch for, especially in short yardage situations um, in almost anything outside with his speed. Just dangerous, right? So he has an issue, walks out of the stadium last week in a boot, probable for this game. Either way, not maybe not be 100%. Okay, so keep that in mind. They also had a uh, offensive tackle, Xavier Chaplin, who also had uh, – he, he actually left the game twice last week and then ended up um, staying out, and he seemed frustrated on the sides per the gobbler country. 
uh, if you want to go check out their blog. But anyways, both are probable. So we had a left tackle in the in the in the bell cow of this offense, uh, possibly out for the game or at least something. But uh, looks like they're probably both going to play. And I'm not wishing for anybody to be hurt. I'm just saying it's advantage Syracuse if they just take a week off. Uh, Jalen yeah. Lane, right? I mean, I don't know. Um, He's Jalen Lane, wide receiver, not putting up huge numbers this year, but effectively he's a gadget guy. Okay, so one one for one through the air for six yards for one touchdown, six rushes for fifty three yards in a touchdown, leads the wide receiving cores and re- receiving core and receiving with three hundred fifty three yards and one touchdown. All three of those one touchdowns came last week against Georgia Tech, ironically enough, but. Uh, a talented dude, nonetheless. And then we got Antoine Powell Ryland, a defensive end. He leads the Hokies in uh, defense in sacks with 11. Um, impact on pass, impact on rush. I mean, he's a run stopper. He's a pass stopper. He's athletic, technique off the edge. Uh, he's quick. He's gonna. He can disrupt Syracuse backfield. And, and uh, you know, from what we saw last week, it's a little concerning for me that this team could mimic what Pitt did and that makes me extremely nervous so uh, of course virginia tech's balance attack on offense is going to be um it's going to be a problem okay uh, they've averaged around 30 points a game but you know their their defense i think is what scares me the most they rank in the top half of the acc in sacks with 26 uh and tackles for loss um largely thanks to the front seven uh disruptive and the pass and run like i mentioned uh, all of them, even, you know, besides Paul Ryland, uh, all of them are, are pretty decent. So, uh, look, Syracuse, just a couple more things, Joe, and then I'm done. You can talk. Um, controlling the tempo of the game. So, Virginia Tech's defense thrives on putting pressure on quarterbacks. Uh, Syracuse has been exposed there. Um, they got to establish a run game this week. They didn't do, they didn't do that last week at all. It's not going to be any easier this week either. Um, as we mentioned last week, you know, whatever runs you can get in, don't give up on it. Also, the short passes and all that, Joe, like we talked about last week. And giving Kyle McCord time because if he doesn't have time, I just am afraid that this is going to mirror last week. And, you know, while Virginia Tech is not really struggling in the turnover um, column this season, they total 11. I think Syracuse totals 11, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. But anyway, um, Syracuse defense can't flounder opportunities this week. They floundered a couple last week, and they've done it kind of throughout the year. Otherwise, I wouldn't mention it. Just a little here, a little there. They've got to take advantage of everything this week and then controlling the clock, which Syracuse is phenomenal at. Number one in the country in time and possession with an average time of possession of 34 minutes a game. Uh, the QSD needs to get off the field on third downs, uh, which is extremely important, Virginia, which they've done a great job of this year. Virginia Tech... Uh, isn't great on third downs, and it's obviously especially third and longs. Uh, conversions is terrible. Uh, third downs in general um, really is a problem for them, but, you know, highlight that. They were, they've were they been 4 for 24 in the past two games on third down conversions. It's 16.6%, and they're just under 40% for the whole year. So uh, just to just to oppose that with Syracuse, six in the country are converting at 50% coming into this game. So get off the field and stay on the field on offense. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, 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 like you said, top six uh, on offense as far as um, third down. And they're also, I want to say like 13th or like top 15 as far as defense on on third down, as far as getting the other team off the field. So uh, one of the biggest things, obviously these guys are run heavy and they're going to want to, Play their offense, stay on 12. schedule so that they get some, you know, stay on schedule so they can get some short third down. And that's that's kind of where they want to live. Uh, they didn't do a great job this past week against Georgia Tech in that, you know, area. You know, you just kind of said the stats. But uh, the one thing that concerns me a little bit uh, is that obviously you have the run pass option, which, you know, we've dealt with um, other teams, you know, Haynes King. And, and, and teams like that, uh, the UNLV team, uh, 
they're going to try to run the ball, and I think that there is a little bit of gamesmanship there. Uh, I don't know if you're if you're leaving the game and you're going off on a walking boot and something's not broke or torn, then it's some type of ankle sprain. And to me, that's just really tough to come back in just one week. So there might be a little bit of gamesmanship, just like nobody thought that Marlo X and Trevor Payne he was going to play sure, last week. But, there's always that, right? Um, yeah. This could be a situation where he's saying they're probable, but you know he also spoke saying that he's not going to know until today and tomorrow and see how he, he he moves. So I'm I'm right there with you. Like if he does play, he's going to be playing through some pain. Uh, he mentioned how tough he was, so I don't doubt that he can. But the first time he gets rolled up on or you know tries to make a move, it's definitely going to hinder his um his lateral movement and even if he does play i think like, i agree with you as far as he's not going to be 100 percent, and uh they're going to have to rely on other running backs so the one thing that which they that, which they don't like necessarily have um I mean, their next well, run yes yeah, steven got, Gold, yeah. 28 malachi yeah. thomas has 28 carries for the season I'm so sorry. yeah so he's got a couple, but he's not. He has not been nearly as successful as Tootin. Uh, well, Tootin's again. indestructible. They just use him constantly. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then when he when they overload one side, then Kyron he goes and he runs right. So uh, that could definitely be something that you know. But we have to be able to stop that, right? We know in the past, and I know that we've got some defense alignment that have been out for the season. You know, if they're going to line up and they're going to, we got to stop the run, then. You know, we're kind of regressing because not regressing, but as far as like didn't have to really worry too much about that with Pittsburgh and uh, NC State didn't worry about it too much. But you saw how CJ Bailey kind of made something out of nothing in a lot of plays. But a lot of times those weren't um, those weren't called scheduled runs. Those were obviously pass plays where he would dip out. So. Uh, Honestly, I do think that we that we match up pretty well. I think that our defense has proven that we've been able to stop offenses like this. Uh, I think that Tootin's uh, injury and the left tackle there, uh, Xavier's injury, is going to have some type of impact. So there's going to have to be a next man uh, up mentality for Virginia Tech. And the the one stat that I heard today that makes me nervous, especially considering our special teams, and that's one thing that we can't put away, is Virginia Tech's has always been special teams you, right? Uh, they're fourth in the country in uh, red zone defense. And right now we don't have a kicking game outside of a certain amount of yardage. So that to me right there might be the difference in the game minus obviously turnover margin. Right. So, I mean, that's what worries me. And again, too, you can't look past what Virginia tech really is. Right. You know, you look at, them being five and three, and we spoke about them. This being one of our tougher, you know, tougher games this year, uh, but we were happy that it was at home during homecoming, right? But Virginia Tech's five and three. They lost their first game on the road at Vanderbilt, and I remember Vanderbilt. Man, come on! I thought Virginia Tech was going to be better than that. Well, Vanderbilt was just ranked last year or last week, and they beat Alabama this year. Um. Also, they lost a game at Rutgers, or sorry, at home against Rutgers in non conference by three points, in which they lost the turnover battle three to one. And that probably was what did them in. Um, and, uh, you know, they scored 16 points in the fourth quarter to come and make it come within a three point game. And they just ran out of time. Uh, and then there was that controversial game at Miami where a lot of people still think that they should have won that game. Uh, and since then, they've only gone to Stanford and won by 24, beat Boston College 42-21 at home, and beat Georgia Tech 21-6 to at home. So this this screams to me like a hungry team, a team that's upset at the fact that they've lost some of the games they've lost early. And realistically, if you look at it, uh, they're only, they only lost one game so far in the ACC, and they still have a chance to, to possibly make, you know, if the, if the right teams lose, get into the ACC championship. So... Um, with a team that's got a worse record than us, they almost have more to play for. So it could be a dangerous team. Well, I think they're a dangerous team anyway. That's right. the thing. And defensively, I think they're better than Pitt. 
and we can talk about was it a bad matchup or this or that, right? But uh, between us and Pitt, that is. But I mean, I don't know. This one's hard to call. They're getting and, and just because you do have the aspect of being at home, and and both teams have been good at home. Syracuse is what I say eight and two at home. Yeah, <clears throat> eight and two at home. So it's pretty good. Get Virginia Tech. Yes. Yeah, and Virginia Tech is seven and three at home. Yeah. And the last time that Virginia Tech played at the Dome, I think it was eight years ago when they came in ranked and, and uh, Dino beat beat them. Was that eight years ago? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Right. Jeez, oh, bro, what the hell? What the <laughs> so, hell happened to the time? Um, yeah, so, you're, yeah, you're, pro- you're probably right because they've only been there the one other time, which was last year. Because we pay, we played them twice in Blacksburg since we played them they, in Blacksburg last year, right? We played them twice in Blacksburg since twenty twenty one. So the game at the Dome, then twenty twenty one, and then if I remember right, the last year, and then this year because everything got screwed up with the realignment or whatever. Oh, yep. So, um, anyway, yeah, but. That's it. Just depends on what we're pulling in the dome, right? And I guess, um, from my perspective, I don't think that noon on a Saturday is going to be that big of a deal. I think it's the matchup that pulls the people in. You know what I'm saying? It's not apple picking season, and I know it's going to be warm here this weekend, but I don't know what's going to be like there. Yeah, well, again, too, we haven't been at home since what game? It's been a month. Yeah, so. And then it's going to be another three weeks before they come back for UConn. So realistically, and it's homecoming. Since Holy Cross in se- September 28th. Okay. <laughs> so over a month and it's homecoming. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like there definitely should be a good, a good crowd for this. Absolutely. Yeah. And just another caveat, just to throw it out there, because it does happen. It doesn't happen all the time, but... Virginia Tech does play Clemson next week. So there is that little... There is, and there's also been already buzz about that. Like, amongst the fans. Not not the team, not the team. Oh, yeah, but, there's going to be but fans, like, but, like, you know, there's sometimes where teams overlook teams, and, I, you know, I'm saying. when it comes down to, you know, tooting in this left tackle, you know, the coach is going to think that they'll be able to sit to rest them against us to, keep, to get them healthy for Clemson. Well, you, you know? want to talk about something to play for, like, that's a game where there's going to be a lot on the line if they could beat us. And do they? What do they do? It's a little chess match at that point. Rick risk versus reward. And hey, I mean that kind of bodes well for Syracuse, obviously. But we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. You just never know with the way um, college sports is, is in the fact that you know eight games in at five and three, they're still like alive for some kind of conference championship because they of the teams they play. Mm-hmm. So, cause they can, they can control a lot of what happens and they have some luck, but they got to beat Syracuse. That's the first thing. Right. So they lose against Syracuse. They can kiss the rest of it. Goodbye. It'd be mind. like us losing to Stanford. I know. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. <laughs> it's time to hear from you. It's time to hear from you, the loud mouths from the loud house. All right, you guys know what to do. I lay the tweet or the post. You go there, you give your predictions on the game, and I don't know who I failed more, Joe, you guys, or myself. It was a late, it was a late post on Twitter. Joe informs me that for once, um, Facebook has beaten twitter in the comments section at seven on twitter and 12 on facebook so it'll does be that mean sh- facebook sucks facebook does still suck yes but i don't understand the deal with twitter today i guess i could say that um it's hard to say time of day thing on twitter is very touchy 
So, but anyways, it saw enough people. There just wasn't a lot of engagement. So maybe they just hate us, Joe. It's probably, it's probably it. Uh, I'll, I will lead off with Twitter. However, at baptized by fire seven, I don't know why no research, but I'm going to say huge bounce back win. McCord hung out at Fran's house Saturday night and fixed everything. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is true. They did, right? Coach talked about it. Wax leads a dominant D to a blowout. 20 or 41 17, Syracuse. Um, yes, they fixed everything. They fixed it. We'll see what happened. He should have had the offensive line over at his house. So we should have had it over all of them. <laughs> uh, at level up Luke, 37 21, Virginia Tech, unfortunately. Cuse has a lot to clean up. I feel like this is likely a letdown spot, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. You know, I got to be honest. I haven't given my prediction yet, but my gut says my, my gut's not giving me the, the, the good feeling that I enjoy, but you know, what does my gut know? You know, beer, beer. Yeah. Uh, at <laughs> David Super, this Virginia Tech game is an opportunity to make a statement for what Fran's program can become. This game is for the school, alumni, fans, and no one else. No one else matters right now. Do it for us. Beat the shit out of them for us. 38-17. to 17. Every setback is a setback to make a comeback. I really, I really like that. And I was, I'm starting to feel a little bit better now. David, thank you. No, I'm not. But it was still it was motivational and I enjoyed it. Uh okay. Ed Saltine Warrior says I'm scared of this game. I am kind of too. Joe has those aspects to it. So I just don't want to see a repeat. That's all. Especially at home. And it's no- only again PGSD. We've seen it before. That's why. Yeah, exactly. It is. It's 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 everybody already li- had lived this and you just expect more of the same. It's your, it's an expectation. It's a terrible one, but it's how you feel. Uh, at no Blanchard 44, 31, 21 revenge game for the orange after getting blown out last year and get it, get it right game from Accord as he throws for 400 plus in three TDs. Oh, goodness gracious. Mm. Uh, there's gotta a be, lot. That's a lot, and if they can do it to this defense, they can. They might be able to just do it to anybody. I right. mean, not that this defense is that good, but they're good. No, let me hit some so I don't have to do all of them at the end. <laughs> oh, it's too late. Go ahead. I only got one left. <laughs> Top fan, Keith Williams Jr. Oh, all right. Keith says, I feel bad about this one. 34-21 Virginia Tech. The quarterback for V Tech is too good, and they can run the ball well, too. Tootin is a really good back and should have a decent day against us. A healthy Tootin would have a field day. In, he's, li- he's listening to Geo's preview. In my opinion. And by the way, we both dropped the ball in the whole having Geo on thing. So Sorry about that, Geo. That was, that was our bad. I mean, we pushed it. Pushed it back to a Wednesday too, which I don't know. Uh, anyway, all right. Yeah, so. well, we thought about Damian Reed though. I mean, I was not excited about seeing him. They shut him down. He's a good back too. Yeah. So is that his name, Damian Reed? Did I have that? Right? Who? From Pitt. Is that his name? That's not his name. Go ahead, I'll find it. His last name is definitely Reed. It definitely is, but is it <clears throat> Damian? It's not. I'm it's most, not. I'm most positive, it's not. It's um, Desmond. Desmond, there you go. Our boy uh, Nadal. He says, uh, Syracuse 35, Virginia Tech 14. I will admit VTech is a tough game for us. They have lots of experience bringing back 25 of 29 players from last year who played 300 snaps. Their run game is impressive. However, their star running backs are both day-to-day, and I'm less afraid of the run these days Plus, our line is bolstered with Wax and Barron. As for McCord, their safeties have been suspect, and I think there is interest in reestablishing the long throw in our offense. Two birds with one stone. Well, I hope you're right. Me too. Speaking of that, and then he brings this up, there's always that chance. 
we're not going to ask the question, but there's always that chance of when does Zed Haynes show back up, right? He was our long ball guy. Yeah, he's the rocket. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, so like it's like this one of those things where, as a fan, which of course bring it up and we can talk about it, but as a fan, <laughs> you just got to assume that he's he's gonna be able to get hopefully get some kind of red shirt right for next year. I mean, if he doesn't come back, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't, I don't know, you know. Okay, is that where you're at? That's where I'm at. Only because, you know, you knew Wax was coming back, right? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like you were like, oh, is he? Uh, you know, we like we kind of already knew what was going on. They're 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 not as like. Yeah, I mean, I it's get a different that. situation, man. You know, when it is like this. Yeah, and it's tough because you don't know. When it comes to personal, is it actually like personal him? Is it some type of some, something happens to somebody in his family? Like yeah, how long is that going to go? You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? So at the end exactly. of the day, I'm sure as we get closer to the end of the season, there's going to have that conversation of, hey. But then again, has he already redshirted at, at Georgia? Oh, good question. You know? Yeah, maybe. I don't think he has, though. Well, could... that's something that I'll have for the next podcast. How about that? Well, I mean, I can tell you. Do you want to know now? If you want to tell me. Uh, my brother, Alex. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> he says, we have to contain their quarterback. If we don't, we lose 34-27. If we can put pressure on that QB and contain him, we win 31-24. Um, so he gives two scores. Okay. I like it. So that's a thinking man's prediction right there. I only have one year at Georgia. So, and that's just showing his stats and he only caught one ball last year. So I guess he still could have, but I don't know. Okay. No, it says freshman. That's it. <laughs> So. No, yeah, redshirt freshman. Okay, so he's, he's already, a redshirt freshman He's already freshman used now. his redshirt. Well, there we go. And you know what? So, you know what? We both should have already known that, actually. You know why? Because yeah. <laughs> they've been talking about it for a month? <laughs> yes, dude. Yes, and he's been listed as a freshman all year, and I'm sure we even talked about it. So why are we even doing no, this? No, yeah, I knew he was a freshman. But yeah, but I when just... he's a freshman in his second year, he's a he has to – it's a mm, process of yeah. elimination. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah. I was just yeah. – I just – that was a – a brain fart yeah i guess the bonehead move <laughs> this bonehead. show is going bad so fast <laughs> <laughs> what else do you got uh mary magdalene uh virginia tech uh, okay. has a, virginia tech has a pretty good d against the pass and a good edge rusher number 52 leads the power four in sacks Virginia Tech also has a tough run game to stop. I think it's going to be a very difficult game. I think Syracuse can squeeze out a victory 27-24. Okay. So Dale Ambrose says, let's just get a win. No pick sixes against us. <laughs> um, top fan Joe. Top fan uh, Joe Pasek. He he texted me last week and he said, "I think I know what went wrong." He said, "I didn't bet enough money on Pitt." Yeah, I remember. I, I so, did, yeah, that's. Well, I mean, put a little double down on uh, on Virginia Tech. You know, put a well, big, big so, put a big chunk down. So Joe says he doesn't give you know. He doesn't give a score. He says, "I'm not sure what the final will be, but I did my part and bet on Vatech." Okay. So it's fair. Yep, and I got one more from our top fan, Andy Stewart. Fourth. And again, he brings that positive energy. The fact that we have five games left and have the ability to do something tremendously special for building the program for future years. Syracuse has had only three plus eight winning seasons in 20 years. Unfortunately, this game won't be one of the wins. <laughs> To make it to an eight-win season, no, I didn't read all of it. Tech beats us thirty-four, thirty-one. Prove me wrong, Cuse. Yeah, 
the old the old disappointment prediction just right at the end just, right just, after something super positive yeah you yeah. got me there andy you got well, me i'm saying that's the just that's that's the that's the one you give in public like that when you're just if they accepted it and so when if it happens you're not as mad and you're just trying to condition yourself it's a mental trick for your own health. <laughs> yeah mental it's almost health. like you're trying to like play a game yeah right? you're, like, you're trying to trick try to yourself speak it into existence right. right so or speak it out of existence but yep. because you're because you know because i that... say this this is gonna happen right yeah it's just and dude to be perfectly honest him pushing out that stat like eight winning seasons we only had eight or sorry we've only had three eight winning seasons in 20 years that's crazy yeah it sucks it's not great it does not great. Um, you can kind of feel it, though. We've been doing this for this is our eighth football season. So, is it eighth or ninth? It's our eighth. It's about to be our ninth basketball season. Oh, okay. Didn't Dino stay here for eight, or was it seven? I don't know. I think we were there for Dino's first year, so I don't think so. Okay. Fine, I don't remember doing the Virginia Tech game when they won and had the whose house. That's what that game was. I know it's in no, a, that was Florida State. That was Virginia Tech. There, okay. What now you yeah, I'm pretty sure. Everybody listening to this right now is <laughs> going berserk. We're it's terrible. So long why did we ago. even do this tonight? So I know, I know. But why did we even do this tonight? We're both of us, both of us are just like terrible tonight. Are yeah. we supposed to know these things before we start talking? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I look. Hey, you know, look. There's things that come up that you just don't think about and all of a sudden you're like, "Huh." Yeah. Yeah. So, why don't you look that up? Uh, <laughs> let's see. At D-Bone75, I believe this Q's team is embarrassed and pissed off from the ass-kicking they took from Pitt. This team is back home after a month away. Uh, the team needs to move away from the Dino terms of collapsing in November. Uh, Dino teams of collapsing in November. Q's 38, Virginia Tech 28. And, yeah, I mean, I think it could be... It's always good to play with a chip on your shoulder. And with that said, that means it's on your mind. And when it's on your mind, it can get in your head, literally. And then, you know, it's kind of like this is going to be the game, I think, that we actually see this team. How, how resilient is this team? You know, how relentless are they? How tough are they? So this game's going to show it. Talk about cakes, bacon in the oven. Okay, okay. Now we're talking about relentless and tough and accountable. Right. So um, we have to see it. This is the game. They need to show it. They've showed they've showed plenty of effort. They've showed plenty of heart. But it, some, you know, some of that dart in there, resilience and all that. But let's see it. It's this yeah, to me, to, to me, it's the extra work, right? It's the extra work that, that he puts in to do community service. It's the extra work he puts into the players and relationships with players and, you know, um, helping them with, you know, spirituality and them growing up as men and the problems and the issues that they go through as being, you know, young adults going through college, you know, everything that goes with that. Uh, he just seems like he's genuine. He knows these kids, he knows their families. It's, it's very, it's a lot more difficult to lose the locker room and have and lose a player for playing for you if you aren't living up to those expectations. So to what you say, like, yeah, we have dart, we have this, we have that. And to me, he comes across as he does what he says. So if he does what he says and he has, the res he has the relationships with these kids and these players and these coaches and these families that they do, then you don't lose a locker room no matter what happens. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's not what I'm, I wouldn't be worried about. I don't, I don't think I was ever worried about that with him, but just because of like what you said, his personality, I mean, just doesn't does doesn't seem like the guy that could easily lose the locker room. 
Right. Yeah. And again, you could have a coach that you like and says the right things, but are they doing the right things off of the field? Right. Are they doing everything in, you know, I'm not going to bring up Latin, like past coaches and all this other kind of stuff. If you want to play it like that. So you can be strict and a player might not like you as a coach, but if you're winning, then winning, it takes away everything, but it takes, it shows real leadership and it takes, it shows a real good, again, he might not be lacking in the, you know, the X's and the O's and never been a head coach and all that other stuff. But as far as a leader, like if you don't lose your men when you're losing, then that's a leader there. It's just, you gotta, you gotta just, you know, polish things up. That's really what it comes down to. And I just feel like that's really where they're at is what do they have? And, you know, polish things up, you know, he's building a team. It's his first year. Uh, but I know that if I have a relationship and my parents have a relationship and this man is, is showing me and leading me in on and off the field day in and day out, and no matter what, if I, if we lose a game or not, that's not going to be the end all be all. And you're not going to lose the players in a locker room if you're doing those things, regardless of win or losses. Agreed. Just my opinion. At Q's Friars, 24-21 Virginia Tech, defense plays well again. And that wraps that up. And you know what time it is. Did you find out what game that was? Uh, no, but I found out that we didn't start doing football until 2017. So, Oh, that's right. That's what I'm telling you. That's why I think this is this will be our... Oh, well, I don't know. If we didn't. That that means we started basketball in 2016, which means yeah, this would be our ninth basketball season. I mm-hmm. You were right. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So I think I think I won. You had it really close. Do you remember that? Oh wait, no. Hold on. I'm looking at the wrong game. So I'm at the wrong damn game. I had the spread. Okay better this this sucks this is too close to even call huh i will tell you that he definitely had a he had a um a viral a viral speech in the locker room after virginia tech and after florida state so okay you just don't know which one's which Mm -hmm. i think we remember the florida state one though wasn't that Francois? What's his noggin? Remember when we just absolutely destroyed them? They're all, he could, we sacked him like I don't even know how many times. Uh, yeah, that's the one. That was the last time they beat F- Florida State, right? Yeah. Whose house? Oh, was Florida that Florida State? State? Florida State. Oh, six you years. Suck. That was... Six years ago, which means that we did cover that. Which means we did. Golly. Okay. All right. Well. I mean, it's in our. I know it's in the, it's in the open. But so is <laughs> right. so is we wouldn't have won ten F in games without Jerry McNamara. That well, they ended that quote, and that was, I mean, the internet's forever. <laughs> it's probably why I'm so confused about everything. That and we've probably uh, been just doing this too long. Well, I think it's just it's Wednesday, you know. <laughs> I'm deleting this whole episode. Stop it. All right, let's get after this. So I had 28-24, and you had, where is this? Oh, 31-21. I had four. So I guess that's me, but it's weird when you get the prediction wrong. (laughs) Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. I'd almost call it a draw if we both get the prediction wrong. So I'm just going to go three to three again. <laughs> I'm going to call it a draw. I mean, we don't get the prediction, right? Like we don't even have the team, right? How can we yeah. go off the score? Yeah. So anyways, uh, fair. so, okay. You, that means you go, you, cause you control because you controlled last game. So you control again. You want the ball or are you going to defer? I'll take it. Okay. I'll okay. take it. Uh, Oh man, I'm gonna go. Mm. Holy cow! 
just yeah, yeah. I know. I just I some technical difficulties. Please stand by. I'd... We will finish one more program shortly. <laughs> so that was Joe's brain alarm going off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just don't, I don't think Tootin's going to be 100%. Um, I think their defense is going to pose problems, but I think our defense is going to hold up too. I think the over-under right now, I think they're a four-point favorite in Vegas. Over-under's around 53.5 or something like that. So that puts it at like a Virginia Tech, like 30-26, 29-25 win. Um, but I think that we will be able to score enough, uh, get close enough once or twice to – put in a field goal and um dude i don't know i got it i got it syracuse 27 virginia tech 23 huh all right well i mean i kind of already talked about like what i think the big deal is um so here's what my gut says and then i'll give you my score <laughs> which is not necessarily my gut. Uh, the offensive line, man. Got this APR, they call him. Antoine Paul Rowan. And, uh, Rylan. And um, he's an animal. And he's probably chomping at the bit after watching tape from last week going, oh yeah, I know exactly what to do. It's going to be in the backfield all game if Syracuse's offensive line doesn't get their stuff together. Uh, and then drones keeping him contained. I feel like we've done a pretty good job expect them to make plays, but I don't expect them to just be completely unruly. And I'm hoping that that continues on the defensive end. And then by Shultutin, I mean, look, he's not going to be a hundred percent. I feel like that's going to, I mean, either we see him limited. Well, this is stating the obvious. We see him limited. We see him. We don't see him at all. Or he appears to be okay, which they're young kids, man. They can push through some of this stuff. So um, he worries me if he's healthy, but it's kind of a question mark. So how do you prepare? Because like Joe said, we've seen running backs or whoever to insert sport, insert position when there's been a change or someone's out and a backup comes in. So we've, we've seen that. We've seen it this year with the UNLV. I mean, Look at that game. It was tough. So, yeah. um, still division one players, man. Right. Exactly. So, you know, you just got to be prepared for anything and th that's not easy. So, but I'm going to pick a Syracuse win because of the home crowd, because of the defense and because of the chip that Kyle McCord's going to be playing with. I feel like the, the, Points for motivation are there, and I feel like that they are going to use it to their advantage. And I and I really do believe in what Fran Brown preaches and what he's teaching and what he's selling these kids. And I feel like they might not fix this thing and make it perfect from last week, but I feel like they do enough, and we can squeak by. 21-20. Hmm. Okay. Maybe uh, McCord really really redeems himself and goes down the field to uh, kill the clock, which they're extremely good at and win the game. Yeah. Yeah. I just, and it's one of those things where, you know, I'm going to be a little critical here and it's not because it may not be true or one way or another. I think that our coaches are pretty good at in game that um, changes, especially from halftime on and everything, but you can't put yourself in a position where you're down how we were down like last game, right? And there's just certain times where it just seems like some teams come in and they seem just a little bit more prepared, but, you know, you get to halftime, it's close enough, and then you can make the changes and, and win a game, you know? But the last game, because of the pick sixes, it was just out of hand, you know? We came out and we ended up, you know, again, it's easy to outscore an opponent in the second half when they're going to half 31 nothing. But, um, yeah, I just hope that we come out with a little bit better of a game plan that we try to understand that, hey, look, Pittsburgh might have gave some people a look to, hey, this is how you beat Syracuse. And Virginia Tech damn sure has the athletes to pull that off. Uh, so, you know, I hope that we work this week on, you know, some offensive plays to kind of 
you know, deter teams from doing what Pittsburgh did to us. Yeah. I think it scares me. We all just need to lay on a couch and talk about it. I feel like. <laughs> so we'll see what happens, man. I got to I got to put some faith in this to some degree to not totally collapse everybody's spirit and follow the <laughs> But you know what it is? It's the... that November football, bro. Um, well, yeah. Everyone's nervous about that. Yeah. We spoke about that. I mean, there's a real chance, you know, if we don't get our head out of our ass that like we're looking at the Yukon game trying to get bowl eligible. That's not where anybody wants to be. That's not where we thought we were going to be. And oh, if we, if we get there, I don't think we deserve a bowl. If, if, we, if that's how we end up. You know what I'm saying? That's just me being a cynical asshole. Well, don't be. But, cool. but, huh? You get six games, you deserve a bowl. Okay. But the, the fact of the matter is that the next three games are all definitely winnable, but all definitely losable if we don't show up. Yeah. Okay. Well, good stuff. Great show, Joe. Well, it's just polished. And we just, did great. We were, we, were, we were on our game tonight. I don't even know. I don't even know. Hump day. <laughs> see, I'm see, not, what happens, uh, see what happens to us when you add one more stressful day of work before we do a podcast. And you know what? My week's been surprisingly easy, but somewhat busy. So, <gasps> like, like, the kids' stuff is finishing up. I'm on the tail end of it. Um, and then... You know, this podcast happened. And <laughs> I thought everything was going great. And then all of this just happened. It just like a pile Look, of shit landed on my desk. I <laughs> will fully take the blame. I will fully take the blame. You sent a text message that you were ready. I didn't see it for like 40 minutes later. That's um, true. That's true. I've had a very stressful week. It's been a tough week of work so far. So. Um, I will take all the blame. You're garbage. Oh, I will hold accountability. You're garbage. Your pick's garbage. Your excuses are garbage. Just all around. Sorry, man. Just a garbage person. Yeah. I was. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's let I don't everybody. Give a shit what you or yep. anybody else thinks or writes. Okay. Yeah, Jim. All right. Me tell them. Me either. Um, well, look. Jim's got my back. Sa- eh. Eh. Saturday at noon. Uh, except for what he says in the, in the opening about me. You're an idiot. And really <laughs> a disloyal person. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so look. Saturday at noon. I can't wait to see a crowd in there making noise. You know, uh, what's what's that wide receiver's name that I mentioned? Jalen, J- yes, yes, Jalen Lane. Uh, he was on ACC PM last night, and he said, "You know, I think our 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 place is is louder. It's the last place I've ever played in. So that's yeah. Maybe sign. when they're playing Metallica, that's your sign. So make some. Let's make some noise. Let's show them that that's not true." I've been there for Metallica. I mean, it's loud, but you got music blasting too. It doesn't count. I'm talking about in game. Anyway, that is going to do it for us. And we appreciate all of you, especially, especially if you're still listening to this hot garbage. And if you didn't listen to this hot garbage, we still appreciate you. So, yes, sir. We will see you Sunday. Go Cures for Joe, Sean, Rob. Peace.